Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how we can create a flyer for a lawn care service uh, business and we're going to use this screenshot of a flyer as a model to follow. And we're going to do this using Inkscape. So let's get right into our demonstration. What we need to start off with is a US letter size document. And by default Inkscape does not use that so we need to come up here to file click new from template and then in the print tab the third one over on the top uh, line is US letter portrait we're gonna select that one and click create from template Inkscape will then create us a blank document that uses those dimensions Now I'm gonna close down the original so that we can uh, just work on the one here now the first thing that we need to do is we need to section off or give ourselves some guidelines so that we kind of know where we're at in the document. And so I'm just going to drag down starting with the top ruler I'm just going to click and drag down a guide and as I place this guide you'll see in the lower right hand corner um, right down here you'll see X and Y and if you notice uh, this guide that I just dragged out I placed it right at 3.67 on the y-axis so that's pretty close to a third of 11 what I want to do now is drag out another one and we're gonna put this one at 7.34 just to kinda get us two-thirds of the way down the page and we're not gonna be able to get it exactly but we can get it pretty close there's 7.33 and that's close enough for what we're doing here uh, we're just using these as guidelines to give us an idea of where we're positioning elements on the page so I'm gonna lock those guides down by clicking this lock icon up here it's gonna lock all of the guides on the document so I can't select them or accidentally move them when I'm placing items and adjusting things alright so the first thing that we need to put on our flyer is this photo now we're not going to use the exact photo but we're gonna use one very similar to this we're gonna use one that has a building in it and that has a lot of landscape around it so what I did was I went on uh, pixabay and pexels.com and got some free photos and we're just going to use one of those to bring it into our document I'm going to click file and I'm going to come down to import and click import and then I'm going to navigate to the folder where I have all the photos and I'm going to select the image that I want to use I think this one will work pretty well for what we're doing so I'm gonna select that one and click open and Inkscape wants to know how I want to import this uh, the import type that I'm using is embed because we want it to stay with the file if you use link then it won't be included in this file it will just refer to it on your system so if you move this file somewhere else Inkscape won't have any clue where that photo is because it won't get moved with the document so you want to select embed here especially if you're gonna take this to an office uh, store and have them print the the flyer out for you uh, so we want to embed it and we want to keep the DPI the dots per inch from the file so if you have a high quality image that you're using you want to keep that DPI and then the rendering mode you can leave on auto we're gonna click OK and it brings in the uh, photo now what we want to do here is just scale this down to where it fits the width of the document now your photo may not need that the photo that you choose may not need to be scaled but if it's bigger than the document you just kind of want to scale it down to where the photo is positioned like you want it to be for the flyer so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down uh, the control key and I'm just gonna drag this arrow and you'll notice that if you hold down control and just drag one of the arrows on the straight side it will scale it down proportionally and I'm going to just move it up here and if you want to position something exactly on the edges of documents and get the scaling to line up with your document you can easily do that by making sure that your snapping is turned on if you click snapping this little magnet up here in the upper right hand corner uh, you'll see that when you start moving things around you get these guide see that line that appears in the middle of the photo that's telling me where the center point is 
the photos center point is lined up with the documents center point and another thing about snapping is when you get close to an edge it will put it right on the edge see how the photo snapped to the top and left so I'm gonna go back to my actually I want to drag from the lower right hand corner this time and I'm gonna hold down control as I do that and it will scale it proportionally and because snapping is turned on it snaps to the edge of the page now if we go back to our model that we're using we'll see that this photo extends down slightly past what a third of the document would be and I'm just kind of eyeing this but in my mind I have a third of the document as being about right here so you have a little bit of the photo that extends past a third of the way down the page and that's all right we can leave the photo like we have it we just need to put a yellow band over the top of the photo and then we need to create this green section on top of that so let's do uh, those two things we won't place any words we're just kind of spacing out the document right now so we're going to create these elements that kind of give us an idea of where everything's going to go and we're going to go completely down the page until we get down here to the bottom. So what we're going to do is create this yellow band, then this green section, then these two yellow sections, and then we'll come down here and create these elements, which interestingly enough we will have already created up here. And then we'll finish it off with this green band down here. So we're just going to lay out the basic elements without putting any of the text on it, just to make sure we get it lined up like this document is here. So we'll come over here and we're going to create a yellow rectangle that extends from one side of the document to the other and it doesn't matter what the size is right now we're just uh, putting getting the elements uh, created so when you drag out your rectangle make sure that you have it in this mode by clicking your select tool and we're just going to just place it generally where we think it needs to go and I think that's pretty close so the next thing that we need is a green rectangle or a rectangle that we're going to make to be green. So let's drag out another one. And this one can be a little uh, taller than the one we just did. And just to remind us that that's the green one, I'm just gonna come down here and click the green color swatch just to make it green. And let's see what we need now over here is, we'll save this shape right here uh, for the last we're going to come down here and do this one but while we have the swatch selected green let's just uh let's make a copy of this rectangle uh, just select it and then come up here and click uh, edit copy and then click edit paste and then come over here and click in place so you don't click paste there's two pastes here you want the second one come over to in place and now you'll see we have two of these one that we're going to use for the bottom that bottom section drag this down to where it's fairly close to what's over here we don't need that much white space or that much negative space in the bottom but we'll just get it as close as we can for now all right so what we want to do now is bring this one up and we may have to turn snapping off because it wants to put it right below this yellow band and we want it to be a little higher than that so i'm going to turn snapping off and just nudge this up with my arrow keys until it's where i want it to be that yellow band isn't that thick it's just kind of acting as a border uh, object so i'm going to turn snapping back on and let's see now we need these two elements here and then we need to duplicate those and flip them and put them down here so let's uh, work on that now uh, we can start with this and actually you know what i want to do i want to come over here and get these color codes and get the get this yellow band set to the right color the yellow color band is uh, 202 202 and 72 and if you're wondering i think i mentioned this in the overview video but just so you know these color values are going to match this example that we're using perfectly because i sampled them from this image and i'm not going to go into that now uh, how i sampled those but I have a, a very short video, it's less than five minutes long, that shows you how to sample and get color information out of an image 
using GIMP and you can find that on this channel. We have the color value, it's 202, 202, 72. So I'm gonna go back over to Inkscape and I'm going to select this yellow band and it is already selected to be the right color so it matches up perfectly. Uh, however, the green is not the right color of green so we're gonna set that one too while we're here. And the green is 338649 it's this top line in my document here so we're going to use that one 338649 and with that one selected i'm going to come over here and go 33 tab 86 tab 39 now we have the right color of green and i'm going to select this one and you know we'll just sample this color so that this image that's selected becomes the same color as that one and we're going to do that by clicking this eyedropper tool, pick colors from image. So I'm going to select that and come up here and then just click on this color. And the selected rectangle becomes the color of the one that I clicked. So now both of our green rectangles are the same color and they're the right color for what we're doing. So now that we have these colors set to what they need to be let's go back to what we were doing uh, before we set those colors and that is creating these two elements here and then we'll duplicate it and make these we can do this a couple of different ways let's just do it one way what we're going to do is we're going to select this and we're going to do like we did a minute ago and we're going to create a copy of that and we're going to select edit copy and then edit paste in place and now we have a copy of that yellow band now what we want to do is we want to cut a chunk of this out so i'm going to come over here and it looks like it's about 36 percent of the width of the entire bar so that's kind of what we're going to do we're not going to make it exactly that but we're going to just kind of cut this right right about here and to do this what we're going to do is we're going to create a square using the rectangle tool we're just going to drag out a square by holding down the control key and dragging down and to the right and snapping will kind of alter what you're doing here so you may want to turn it off and I'm going to I'm going to come up here and turn off snapping I'll hit control Z and start over here again you want to just hold down control and drag down and to the right now you don't want this to be too large in fact I think that's about right you just want to get it close to the same maybe a little bit bigger than the band that you're going to use it on so I'm gonna come up here and click the selector tool and then click the shape until you get these control handles and we're gonna rotate this while we hold down the control key and we're gonna just rotate it until it's 45 degrees so now what we have is the arrow that we're gonna use to cut this out the problem is is this is a square and we want it to look more like a chevron and to do that we're just going to duplicate what we have here by coming up here to edit and clicking copy and then clicking edit and then coming down to the second paste and coming over to in place and click that and now we have two of these and i'll just change the color of the top one to some random color down here just to make it different and then i'm going to nudge this over and you'll see what happens is we end up with the green part looks basically like the shape we want to use on this object so what we're going to do is we're going to select both of these and since the red one's on top of the green one we're going to punch the part of the green shape out using the red shape so with both of these selected you come up here to path and drop down to difference and that's what happens when you click it you get the difference between those two shapes which was whatever the bottom had that the top shape did not have. Now what we want to do is use this shape that we just made to remove part of this yellow shape. Now we may have to stretch this vertically a little bit. I'm going to zoom in by holding control and then using the mouse wheel just to see if we need to. Yeah, it just needs to be stretched a little bit. So I'm going to click the shape again and then just drag this handle down ever so slightly and if you turn snapping on it'll kind of help you in this situation so it'll snap this corner to that edge and then when we do this up here it'll do the same thing 
So now we have our chevron lined up exactly with the rectangle. I'm going to zoom back out by holding control and using my mouse wheel. I'm going to do that even a little more just to make sure I'm in the right area. Uh, so I'm going to nudge this to the right just a tiny bit and it looks like it's in the right space now or the right location so I'm going to hold down shift and select the rectangle and now I have both of these objects selected. I'm going to come up here to path and click path and then I'm going to click difference and you'll see now we have one shape with a big chunk missing uh, and if you look at the model that we're following it's kind of close to what we have here however there's a problem actually there's a couple of problems one is it looks like our shape is a little taller than this and two you'll see that part of this shape is one color and the other part is another color so we need to fix both of those things and we're gonna do that right now so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this arrow and we're just gonna push this up a little bit just to shrink that down and you'll see that we're getting an even more accurate shape with our arrow see how our arrow is being squished so it's becoming even more pointed I think that's about right yeah that looks like it's pretty close so now we have it the right height but how do we get this shape to be colored different from this one over here well what we need to do is we need to break this shape apart because we just chopped out a big chunk of it and now this could be two shapes if we just break them apart so what we want to do is we want to come up here to our path menu and click uh, path and then just come down here to break apart and when we break this apart you'll see that it now becomes two shapes both of which are selected so if you click on somewhere off of the document it will deselect those and now you'll see when I click this right part it's its own shape and the left one is its own shape which means that we can put a different color value on this one so I'm going to come over here and find out what color value we need to use for the light yellow and it's 214, 217, 157 so I'll come over here and with it selected I will fill in those values 214 tab 217 tab 157 tab and now we have our light yellow section so what I'm gonna do now is select both of these objects and I'm just going to push this up to where it belongs in our document now we have this band in place and if you remember I said we needed to just make a copy of that and flip it over problem is we chopped it into two parts but that's okay if you select both you can treat them as one and so with them both selected I'm gonna come up here and click edit copy and then I'm gonna go edit paste in place again and then I'm gonna drag the one that we just pasted down and once you get that into place you can just flip this uh, with both of these items selected just come up here to object and click object and come down here to flip horizontal and now it's flipped it and what we have here in our document now is the basic layout for what we're gonna do we haven't put any of the text on the flyer yet but we've got the basic layout and so what we want to do now is work on getting this shape right here which is going to be a little more involved and then we need to create this little clump of grass and we can do that using some of the methods that we've been using uh, I think what I want to do is instead of going with this shape that has these curves I think I want to use a shape that has more straight lines it looks like this is meant to be sort of an abstract arrow pointing up at the lawn basically and while this works I think that maybe one with straight edges this is just my opinion and design is subjective but I think uh, one with more straight edges would kind of flow with some of these other straight edges in the document but maybe that's what they were going for making this different so that it would draw attention I don't know just in case you like the oval better I think we'll just do both of them and then see which one we like we'll just do the oval first we'll create an ellipse and drag out well let me change the color here let's just use 
something that's darker than what we had there. Okay, so I'm going to drag out an oval and then use my selector tool to move it up and I'm going to have to turn snapping off. All right, so with that shape selected, we need to come up here to our node tool and click it. And it's going to change the mode of the shape. And if it looks like this, where it has the two squares and the circle, uh, what you want to do is come up here to the path menu and then come down here and hit flatten. We want to flatten that out so that it's just four nodes. And we're going to select this top node. So what we want to do now is we want to uh, select this node and then come up here, your toolbar, and click make selected nodes corner. And we want to click that with that shape selected and you'll see that it turns this node into a corner. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to put a little bit of curvature on this and to do that we're going to hold down the shift key and while we drag away from this node you'll see that we get a control handle and if I just pull that down a little bit uh, it creates a little bit of a curve and I'm going to do the same thing uh, by letting off of it and I'm going to hold down the shift key again and I'm going to pull one out on the right. And so you can see here what we have is a, li a little bit of a curve. So if I click off of this shape, I can now uh, just move it up here. Actually, I need to go back to my selector tool and select this shape. And then I can kind of push it up here. Now let's do the other one. Uh, the other one's going to be a little simpler. We're not going to have to work with these curves but we're just going to drag out a rectangle that's about the same size as that as that oval and then we're going to drag out a square by holding down the shift well by clicking our shape tool up here our rectangle and then holding down control shift and dragging down into the right we'll get a square and then go up to our select selector tool and click it and then click the shape until you get these control handles and if you hold down control while you rotate this you should be able to land on a 45 degree rotation and then we're going to just put this little point on top of that shape now select both of these shapes because we want to center these up select both of them and then come over here to your align panel and if you don't see your align tab in the right over here just click this drop down arrow and you can click it in this in this group and it will create a tab here and it will select it so with your two shapes selected what we want to do is align these two shapes on the vertical axis center it so when we click that nothing happened on mine because mine just happened to be centered but uh, if they're not, they will be after you click that. So now that we have both of these uh, centered properly, uh, with them both selected, we want to combine them by clicking the path and then go down to Union and click Union. And now we have uh, this other version of what's going to be our arrow. So let's just make sure that all of these are lined up in the center. So. I'm going to change the color of that rectangle one and then I'm going to select the oval and I'm going to select the green uh, shape. Now all of them are selected. We want to align those on the center as well. And if you notice here, I, I didn't mention this before, but you can align things based on different reference points. And if we align them to the biggest object, then that aligns them separately from one another. But because I want all of these to be in the center of the document, I'm going to change this and I'm going to just select page so that everything is going to be aligned to the center of the page. And you see when I click that, this got nudged to the left just a tiny bit. But now we have everything centered in the middle of the flyer. So what I'm going to do, just to kind of give us a way to look at this, is I'm going to come over here. Uh, let's nudge this up a little bit. 
All right, let's make all of these shapes the same color. So I'm going to come over here to the Fill and Stroke tab, and I'm going to select our rectangle version, and I'm going to click this Pick Colors from Image and select this green color. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the oval, and I'm going to make it green as well. So now what you can see here is we're looking at, you know what, I need to just nudge this up a tiny bit just so that just so that this green rectangle is not lined up perfectly with with our uh, yellow band there, that border line. So this is what the, the rectangle one, uh, actually I'm still seeing some of the oval behind there. So let's uh, turn off that layer uh, by selecting one of those. Let's turn it off. Okay, so that's what the oval is going to look like, and it looks like it needs to go up too a little bit just to catch some of that curvature. Alright, so there's the the rounded version, and maybe our curves are not quite as pronounced as maybe they could be, so let's make that a little more obvious. And maybe if I push this up a little bit we're getting closer <laughs> to to uh, matching the to matching this ours is a little more pointed but but I think it works if we decide to use that one so that's what the oval one looks like and this is what the rectangle one looks like uh, I kind of uh, prefer this one um, maybe it might look even a little better if this was if this had the corner uh, chopped off but we're not going to get we're not going to uh, go into all of that uh, we'll you could you could leave this rectangle one on here if you wanted to make it a little more unique and we may end up coming back and using it but I think just to follow uh, the model a little closer I think I'm gonna use this one and I think it needs to be a little wider so I'm going to stretch it in the horizontal direction on both sides by dragging out this arrow while I'm holding down the shift key on my keyboard and so if I drag that out it's going to uh, make it a little bit wider and if I so I'm just switching over to see kind of how this looks compared to our model and I think it I think if we were using uh, a different image, uh, we could maybe go up a little higher on the image with it, but I don't want to do that here because I think if we get this dark green over this over this shrub here too much, we're going to lose this line and it's not going to stand out as much. So I'm just going to leave it right there. And now we have our basic... Uh, our basic shapes are in place and let's just uh, let's just compare the whole thing to our model and I'm just switching back and forth to kind of see how that looks I think it looks about I think it looks pretty close to uh, what the model is. So now what we need to do is create our little clump of grass and we're gonna do that down here in this white space and just to kind of explain how we're gonna do this if you were to imagine circles like ovals that are taller than they are wide if you create a an oval and then copy that oval and just offset it a little bit you can create this shape and that's what we're gonna do we're gonna create this little clump of grass by using ovals and we're gonna subtract sections of ovals from other ovals and then once we create a blade of grass we can just duplicate that and then make the rest of this so let's just see if we can uh, put that together pretty quick so I'm just gonna grab an oval and I'm gonna drag it out here about that size and I'm gonna select it 
and what I want to do is I want to change its color so that it's the right color yellow. This dark color is what this dark yellow or this yellow color is exactly what this needs to be. So I'm going to go to my fill and stroke menu or tool and I'm going to come down here to the eyedropper with that oval selected and I'm going to click it and then I'm going to click on one of those yellow bands and now we have a yellow oval which is what we want to start with. Now we're going to copy this and paste it in place and I've been coming up here to the edit, copy and then edit, paste and coming over here to in place and doing it that way but there's hotkeys for both of those commands so if you click edit and you look at the copy you'll see control plus the C key does the same thing so if I have a shape selected I can hit control and C and it will copy that so if I hold down control and hit C I have a copy of that shape now and the hot key for the paste in place is control plus alt while you hit the V key. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to go control alt and V and now I have a copy of that oval. So now what we need to do is cut out part of the bottom one using the top one and this is going to be a little easier to do if the two ovals are different colors so I'm going to change the color of the top one and I'm going to zoom in so I can see I'm just going to place this top oval on the bottom one so that I can kind of see that grass blade right here if I just imagine from here up I can kind of see it so I'm going to select both of those and I'm going to click path and then difference and I get the difference we only want the top part of this so I'm going to make a rectangle and cut off the bottom like we've been doing and I want to make sure that I have enough of that left so once you get your rectangle positioned right just select both and then click path difference and now we have one blade of grass really all of these other ones are very similar in shape to that original one so we're just going to copy that by using the control plus C control alt V and then we have another copy now this one can be a little can be shaped a little different so I'm gonna make it a little shorter and maybe a little narrower and then I'm gonna just drag it over to where it's pretty close to the original one and now we're gonna copy this same one by hitting control C control alt V and then dragging it over here and if you do it while you hold the control key down they'll stay pretty much level with one another and we need to flip this in the opposite direction so to do that with it selected come up here to object and then flip horizontally and now you'll see that if we go back to dragging it while we hold the control key down we have our other a grass blade and we can just maybe just to vary it a little bit just make it a little wider and a little shorter and that'll make room for our other little uh, blade of grass that's going to go right in here and we're going to copy this one again control C control alt V and then drag it up here and we're going to flip it as well we're going to use uh, object with it selected object flip horizontal and then this one is smaller than the others so what we want to do is scale this down while we hold control and shift just drag on that corner and then we're gonna bring it down here and we can even stretch it up a little bit if we wanted to maybe even make it wider just uh, position it the way you want it to be and in the original in our model that we're following here this blade is actually a separate blade it follows this line right here on the larger blade so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create that line on this blade and to do it what we want to do just to make sure that we get that we get the right line is we're gonna duplicate this blade of grass now if you look down here path 7 is that blade and this blade is path 7-0-8 so this blade here is below this blade here and so if we copy this I'm gonna do that real quick control C control alt V 
And so now I have a copy, which is path 7-9, just to show you, because we're going to lose it anyway. I'm going to change the color of it. So now we have path 7-9, which is a copy of that green one under it, or that yellow one under it. But if we were to select this one and this one by holding shift down, if we were to try to uh, cut out part of this yellow one with this brownish red one, it would work exactly backwards from how it's been working through this whole uh, lesson so far. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. If I hit path and I use difference, see what happens is we're, we, <laughs> we keep the part that we don't want to keep. It happens exactly backwards. I'm going to hit control and Z and back up one one step because what we need to do is we need to have this the one we're going to use as our cookie cutter or our punch we're going to use this one so we need to move it above this layer here which is the one we're trying to cut so i'm just going to drag this layer up to where it's above layer 7-0-8 and now it'll work like it has been throughout the the video if I select both of these and then I come up here and click path and I hit difference now we have our blade of grass and if we just nudge it away you'll see that it it has the proper line and we can turn well snapping is turned off so we should be able to just position this where we want it you can just rotate it a little bit if you want and just uh, kind of work it in here to where we want it to be and so now we have a now we have a blade of grass and I, or we have a clump of grass let's just see I think it's not quite wide enough for how tall it is so let's turn this into one object by selecting all of it and coming up to our path menu and hitting union and then we'll just make it a little wider just stretch it out and we could even maybe even put another just another piece in here if we wanted to I'm not going to right now I think it might look better if we did but now we have our clump of grass we just need to put it in place make sure it's in the right location for our design here and so I'm gonna put it right there now we have that part in place let's just come back over here and just kind of look at it uh, one other thing that we want to do here is we want to create this little frame uh, that's the only other part that's not text uh, so let's create that element and we're gonna do that with a couple of rectangles and we're gonna do it just like we've been doing it uh, we're gonna create this frame by creating two rectangles one on top of the other we're gonna scale the inner one or scale the the, the top one down and we're just gonna subtract the bottom one from the, or subtract the top one from the bottom one to make this frame so uh, to do that we're going to and let's see what's the proportions it's about half the size of the you know what it looks like it's just a little smaller than the width of this so we'll just base it on that so we're going to uh, start our rectangle up here and just drag it out it doesn't have to be perfect and then we're going to use our selector tool we're going to do control C control alt V and then we're going to click on it until we get these control handles and then control shift hold that down while you drag the corner handle down it doesn't look like it's scaling exactly the way I want it to so I'm going to just and maybe it's because snapping is turned off but I'm just gonna drag these out to where I want them to be once I get those there where I want them I'll select both rectangles and then using the path menu I will click difference and now I have that frame it's just the wrong color so if I come over here to my fill and stroke tab in my tools panel and then I have the frame selected I will click the ink dropper and then click a green square and now I get that color let's see if we're in a good place now with our our layout elements my frames a little bigger than that one so let's just kind of scale it down by holding control and shift and then dragging and then we'll compare it and there we go it it looks like it's about right so we're ready 
to begin putting the text on this flyer. We're almost uh, we're almost done. The text now is is all we have left. So let's just see what we have here, and we'll do these one at a time. Uh, first, we have the name of the business and the name of the business that I made up. This is just an imaginary uh, business name. D&J Services. I'm going to copy that out of my notes and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select the text tool. I'm going to click right in the general area where I want it to go and then I'm going to hit Control V and that's going to paste what I copied out of that document. It's the wrong color though so what we need to do is adjust the color. Probably the easiest way to do it is just with the text selected just click on a white swatch down here that says it's five percent gray okay so that's pretty close to white uh, but if we want to push it all the way to white we can with our sliders up here just uh, select our sliders and slide them up till they're white that's a little too big uh, it is the right font though uh, you can tell that by selecting the word and then clicking on this tool and you'll see that up here enter tight is the font that i've used for this and my notes over here have that as being the sans serif font that I want to use. Just a side note, um, I may have explained this in the overview video, but we're going to use two different fonts instead of three. Sans serif fonts are the ones that don't have the little tails on the, on the letters. If you look at this L in the word clean, you see these little tails that come off? Those are serifs. And if a, a font is a serif font, it means it has that feature. If it's a sans serif font, it means it's without that feature. So our sans serif font that we're using is similar to what they're using. So we have our business name here, and we're just going to scale this down by holding down Control and Shift and dragging this corner until it gets to be about where we want it. And then I'm just going to nudge it, drag it up here actually, and put it in place. What we can do is we can select this text and come over here to our align panel. Since we're aligning with the page, we can just hit the center key or the center button and it will place that in the center of the page. And I don't think we did that with the grass, but we can do that with it as well. So now these two elements are uh, aligned with one another. I'm just going to nudge this up a little bit. And now uh, we can go to our next piece of text. Instead of putting clean and green landscaping service, uh, I thought reliable lawn care and landscape was a nice phrase to put in here to describe what this business is. So I'm going to select that from my notes and I'm going to hit Control C and then I'm going to come over to Inkscape and create a, a text cursor and I'm going to hit Control V and it's going to paste that text where my cursor was. Now there's two things about this. It's a little bit too big and because it's it hasn't been changed to the serif font it kind of loses the contrast that makes the name of the business stand out. So we want to change that both of those things we want to uh, scale this down first, just a little bit, and then we want to change the font. So with it selected, click the A, the text tool over here, and then come up here, and you can do this a couple of different ways. You can click this drop down arrow and find it. Find, we're looking for Times New Roman. Or you can just click inside of here and start typing it out and it will fill it in and then if you just arrow down to the one you want and hit enter it will select it and you'll notice that the text on the document changed uh, and I think lawn care should be two words so just a little note when you are working with text if you have it selected you can click the text tool and you can change the alignment up here just by selecting one of these and you can do left you can do right or you can do like I'm doing here and center it and it will it will align the way you want it to be aligned so uh, let's put this whole text object in the center of the page by selecting it and then coming up to our align tool and click 
center on vertical axis with in relation to the page and you'll see it's already uh, centered all right so now that we have the description of what the business does uh, we're going to now move down here to these two uh, items and we're going to put the text in those now these are just uh, additional information that might help the person make uh, a decision so you could put all sorts of things in here what I thought we would do is put the phone number in here and make it a little more prominent so I'm gonna put call now over here instead of trust us and I'm going to put a, a fake phone number over here on the right and that's going to basically send the message to call now and then this abstract arrow is going to point to the phone number. So I thought that uh, we would do that for this section and to do that I'm just going to actually just copy the phone number. I'm going to type call now because I think I want it to be all caps. But I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put another text element here and I'm going to type out call now with while I'm holding down the select key or the shift key while I'm holding down the shift key now it's way too big but we're going to just scale it down by selecting this selector tool holding down control shift and then just uh, dropping that down and here's something I noticed with when I was planning this out. Uh, this white text on this light yellow background, it's, it's almost too washed out to even notice. Now, I don't know how that's going to show up when it gets printed out, but I think that it would look better if it was maybe not this dark green, but a darker color than just this white so what I think I'm gonna do is we'll try this green and see if it's too too much and to do that I'm gonna come over here to the fill and stroke panel and I'm going to just sample this green color like we've been doing up to now and yeah I think that's a little too much it it kind of overpowers the arrow itself I think so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back it down a little bit and maybe even just select this dark yellow. Uh, let's just sample that dark yellow and then darken it up a little bit more. Now to do that I'm going to use, I'm not going to change the RGB color of this dark yellow. All I want to do is take the lightness down and make it darker but I want to keep the hue and I want to keep uh, the other features of that color. I just want to make it darker. So I'm going to switch this from RGB to HSL, which is hue, saturation, and lightness. And you can see we're going to keep the saturation and the hue where they're at, but we're just going to make a darker version of this same color. And so what that's going to do is allow us to put a softer call to action on there and I still think it's a little too big so I'm going to uh, scale it down by holding down control and shift and just scaling it down a little bit more and now what we can do uh, because I like the size of this is we can just hit control C control alt V make a copy of that text and then hold down shift and hit the right arrow and push it over to the phone area and then I'm gonna change to this the text tool and I'm gonna select everything by hitting control A while I'm inside of that text well I'm gonna have to go over and get the phone number again so I'm gonna right click here and click copy and I'm gonna come back over to our document and while I'm inside of the document I'm gonna hit paste or I'll right click inside of it and click paste and now we have our phone number inside of our shape that we want to put it in let's just uh, position this nudge this up a little bit and this text I think looks good in white so I'm gonna just uh, turn it back to white 
and what we can do is maybe even move it over to the left a little more and we even have room uh, to put some some additional text in here if we wanted to we could just create another message here if we wanted to we could change this from call now to contact us and we could put the phone number here and we could put an email address over here so I think that that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna put uh, uh, DNJ at let's just uh, actually we'll use example.com so we don't have a real email address in there and now we can just uh, kind of position this where we want it to be we can get rid of the trailing spaces that I just added again position it in the center where we want it to be and we're now we're gonna change call now to contact us because it makes more sense with what it's what it's calling people to do and it fits it it the alignments a little better so so I think uh, that's gonna be alright for that section and now what we need to do is just uh, put in our text for the lower half of this flyer. So I'm going to uh, look over here. So we still have this line down here before we get into the services and the what might be referred to as the special offer. We're going to fill in these two areas and then we're going to put a an imaginary uh, website down here at the bottom which I have the text for and that'll that's a pretty easy one so I'm just going to copy that from the notes and then I'm going to come over here and select the text tool just place it down here I'm going to hold down control and hit V and you can see that the size of the text and the color of the text is not quite right but we can change that just come up here to the fill and stroke tab of your tools panel and just slide all of these sliders over to the right if they're in RGB uh, mode I guess if they're in HSL mode uh, you could slide the saturation down slide the lightness up the hue won't matter if the saturation is all the way down and the lightness is all the way up but now we need to change the size of the text so I'm going to click inside of the text area and I'm going to hold down control and hit the A letter A and that will select all of the text and then you can come up here when you select a text area you can change the size of the text by simply selecting the font size and you can just go down until you get the size that you're after or uh, another way that you can adjust the text is just by scaling it like we have been our elements so you can just click on it here if you need to you might have to click on it a couple of times just until you have your control handles and then hold down control and shift and then just drag that corner down and you can scale the text that way as well personally I think uh, the website if you have a website it's a good way to let people know what your services are and allow them to find information without you having to answer it in person especially if you have a small business and you're busy working doing the service it can fill people in in general about the thing that you do so I personally like to have the website featured in a large enough font on the flyer so that it is noticeable but now what we want to do is center this element on the flyer and if you remember we have our align and distribute panel up here that we can align things with now here's where relative to comes into play because we've been aligning items in relationship to other items but now we want to align it with regard to the whole flyer and so I'm going to show you uh, how to do that here so I'm going to select the one element that I want to align and I'm going to select align in relation to the page relative to the page and then I'm just going to click the center on vertical axis and you see how it moved that whole element over to where it's in the middle that one is taken care of what are we going to put in this lower band that has the arrow pointing to the left this pair of elements is a lot like this one up here they just go in the opposite direction so I'm going to come over here and take a look at what was in the example our model has I don't know if that's a coupon code or 
I don't know what this information is, but what I thought that we would put in our version or in the example that I'm doing here was this text on the left side. And then I thought the arrow, this is meant to represent the arrow, but in the right side, I thought we would put uh, the expiration date. So let's start by doing the left side. And I'm just going to select all of this text and I'm going to hit Control C and then I'm going to come over to Inkscape and in a new text area that I create using my text tool, I'll click that. With it selected, I'll put my cursor there and click and then I will hold down Control and hit V. And now we have white text uh, on that light background. So what we need to do is number one, make this text smaller and number two, we need to change the color of it. So similar to what we just did, but we're going to change the color to something different. So I'm going to scale this down the same way I did a moment ago and I'm going to hold down control and shift and drag on this right corner until the text is the size that I would like it to be. And I'll just nudge that down since it's already selected. I'll use my arrow keys on my keyboard. You could drag it into place as well. I'm going to zoom in here. It, it looks like it might be that separator character is just a little taller than the text. So I'm going to scale this down even a little more just so that vertical line is not taking up the full height of that area. So here is where we would use the alignment tool to align this item with this yellow background. I'm going to click the background first and then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to hold down shift and click the text until both are selected and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to switch relative to you can select any of these uh, first, sele uh, first selected last selected if we align it to the first selected because that was the first one I selected uh, it should line the text up with this background and not move the yellow part let's uh, hit center on vertical axis and you see that it moved the text over. So now we have uh, that text in place and the thing that I just noticed and maybe you noticed it too, uh, but this text that I've been working with is not Times New Roman. So we need to change that because in the model, uh, as I mentioned earlier, well we could leave, we could leave the website in sans serif font but the business name and the website are the only two pieces of text that are in sans serif the rest of it it all has serifs and like i mentioned before i think that was meant to make these two pieces of text stand out ever so slightly from the rest of the information on the flyer so i'm going to uh, just change this text that we just put in the page I'm going to change that font clicking off of the canvas will allow you to deselect everything and then I'm going to click on one of these letters in the text to select it once it's selected I can come over here to my text tool click it and then when it's selected I can change my font to Times New Roman and I'm going to do that the same way we did before just by typing in the name of the font and then when I see it I will arrow down to it and hit enter when it's highlighted and you'll see that our text just changed and now we're dealing with Times New Roman in this area and the interesting thing is now the font is smaller so I need to scale it up because the font sizing on Times New Roman is a little different than it is on enter tight and what that means is we're going to have to uh, recenter this text again. So we'll select, we'll leave the text selected, hold down the shift key and click on the yellow background. And then I'm going to come up here and now you'll, re you'll notice that I selected the background last. So we need to change the relative to option to last selected because that's what we want to center against. So I'll click that and you see that the text just got nudged to the right a little bit. So now that we have our coupon code in place, let's put the expiration date text in now over here on the right. So what I'm going to do is go get my text out of my notes. I'm just going to highlight this, 
hit control C and then I'm going to come back over to Inkscape and create another text field with the text tool click on the canvas and then I'm going to control V and paste that text into place and I'm going to just get it relatively close to where it goes and then I'm going to scale it down and I'm going to hold down control and shift as I do this like we have been and I'll just point out that when you have control and shift held down it scales whatever you're sizing it scales it on the center point it, it makes it real easy to get uh, the whole thing sized down so now we have this text however we we have the same issue with this text that we had with the contact us text up here and so we need to sample the color of this and put it on this so what we're gonna do is come up here to our stroke and fill tool hit the eyedropper here and then now what we're gonna do is make sure that we have the expiration date selected see we have a bounding box here so it's selected uh, I want to with that selected come up to the fill and stroke panel and then choose the eyedropper and then come over here and just zoom in and make sure that we get this dark color that we used up there and if I hold down the spacebar and just move my mouse uh, I can pan and now we have the right color on uh, the expiration date so now what I want to do is I want to center that expiration date in the element that it is resting on. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and click this light yellow arrow. And then I'm going to come over here and switch back to the align panel. And then uh, I selected the background last so this setting is fine. So I'm going to hit center on vertical axis and it moves it over into the middle. Another thing that we can do is we can make sure that this text is vertically aligned with this text. So I'm going to hold down shift and click on any of these letters in fall 2023 special to where both of those are selected. I want to deselect this yellow background so I'm going to while holding down the shift key I'm going to click on that yellow arrow that light yellow arrow and deselect it so now we have just the two text fields selected and I'm going to come up here click center on horizontal axis and it makes sure that they're both centered or aligned so now we just have a couple of more items here we need to put in uh, the services right here which is another text field and then we need to build out what we're going to put in here so to do that let's see we're going to come over here and uh, just put services include and then we'll just uh, type in some services but I'm going to click uh, the text tool and I'm going to start right up here and I'm just going to type services and th this text I think needs to be green that green color so after I get the text in place I'll just change the color of it I think that might be a little too big so I'm going to select the text tool come up here and just change this to 32 and tab out and it shrinks it a little bit but now I'd like it to be a different color so I'm going to choose the selector tool and with it selected I'm going to uh, come over here and go to my fill and stroke tool and click the pick colors from image and then I'm going to come up here and click on this green and that's going to turn that text green so now we have our heading and then what are some of these services uh, lawn mowing landscaping design rockscaping I'm just gonna type them out here while I'm on the same screen here and I think that'll work now you could do these you could do this list a bunch of different ways. I'm going to put the text in there and then I'm going to put the dots next to it and we could actually make like stars maybe. I'm going to choose the 
text tool, place my cursor here and click, hold down control and press the V key on my keyboard. And you'll see that a couple of things, the text is a little too big. I need to take it down a few notches, <laughs> down to about at 22, I think will work. The line spacing, I want it to be a little bit further apart. So with all that text selected, I'm just going to push this up, click it a couple of times and that'll add some space and that makes it a little easier to read. So I'm just going to uh, do that and then I'm going to change the alignment because I like the idea of these being left aligned especially if we're going to put little bullets next to them. So I'm going to click the text alignment drop down and I'm going to select left align and that's going to align them all. Go over to my select tool and then click it and then I'm just going to drag this into place. And I'm going to align the in on the longest one in the list which is design in my case because we're using the example here I'm gonna nudge this down a little bit to about there that's alright for there and now what I want to do is add the stars now to me it seems like stars especially the ones you see for reviews right are this yellow color a lot of times actually they're a little different color of yellow but we're going to use this one so I'm just going to drag out a star by selecting the polygon the star slash polygon tool I'm going to come up here to corners and I'm going to choose five let's just see what we get when we drag this out I'm just going to drag it out any size I'm going to with it selected I'm going to come over here to the fill and stroke panel and choose pick colors from image and then I'm going to come over here and click this yellow. And now we have this uh, nice uh, yellow star that may or may not, well, I guess it'll show up all right. But what we could do is we could come over here to stroke paint, just uh, see if we can sample it. Click uh, the, the eyedropper and then click the green color and it did sample it. Now all we got to do is just push the stroke style up so that the border is a little wider. We can just uh, click this until we get a nice little border that will create a contrast on that star. So I think this star is nice. It's a little bit off center. So I'm just going to uh, rotate it a little bit. Mine is off center. Your, yours might not. Yours might already look like this. But I'm going to straighten mine out. And then I'm going to scale it down by holding control shift and dragging on this corner and if I take that down now we have a nice uh, little star that's a little bigger than the space we have but we can zoom in and get it exactly right I'm zooming in by holding down control and then using the mouse wheel I'm gonna scale this down a little bit more control shift and drag on this corner and I think that will work now we can just if your snapping is turned off this may be a little more difficult to get aligned so you may want to come up here and turn it on I'm gonna turn mine on so that I can see where that edge see how that edge lines up and then if I drop this down I want it to be aligned with the S so I'm just going to line it up there we can actually just uh, control C control alt V to get another one and then shift and arrow down and then we can scroll our flyer down, control C, and then and then control C, control alt V, and then shift it while hitting the down arrow, control C, control alt V, and then shift down, control C, control alt V, shift down. And now we have uh, interesting little markers for each line in our list. So what we want to do is we want to align these stars with the text that they're next to. Now the text is evenly spaced. The stars are not. We just kind of copied and pasted them in place and then nudged them down. But what we can do is we can align this star with this line because all of this is one body of text we can't just line this star up with this line and line each of the other stars up with the line they're next to what we need to do is align this star with this top line and probably the best way to do that is just to eye it up like we've already done 
but we just need to eye this one up with its line and I'm just gonna nudge it into place that looks about right to me it may be not quite if we were to go and measure it but it looks okay and then I want to select all five of these stars just drag out a rectangle around them and then I want to come over to my align and you notice it's the align and distribute panel we're gonna distribute these stars across the space and what that does is it basically spreads them out evenly but you gotta have the two end ones positioned where you want them to be and then it'll just put all the middle ones in place now we should be able to get the results we want because this one is lined up with this line this one is lined up with that line and these lines are distributed evenly so it makes sense that these stars would end up aligned with the text that they belong to. We're just going to come over here and find the vertical looks like this icon is the even vertical gaps and it's going to do it on whatever we have selected so I'm just going to click that and you see that the stars all got moved to where they need to be. So now we have our stars lined up with our list. You may want to make these stars a different color yellow or you could leave them here or you could even use a different shape. Uh, it's up to you. I'm going to come over here now and see what we need to do to get it looks like this is just a a coupon. It, it's kind of difficult for me to read but it looks like it says welcome everybody to choose us. So I'm just gonna use the text that's in here it looks like it says use this flyer when you schedule your call or present it to your technician to receive discount so I'm gonna pause the video type all this text out so we don't have to include it in the video and then uh, we'll just paste it in place okay so I have the text all typed out now so I'm just going to uh, we're gonna copy out each one of these lines and then we'll paste it all in place and then move it around and I'll come over here and click on the text tool and then I will just uh, click on the flyer and then hold down control and hit V and you've got your text however it's the wrong color and it has that stroke on it so we want to change the way it looks let's change the stroke style down to no stroke and now we'll just sample the green the green color uh, by going over to our fill and stroke panel actually we want to change the fill and then we'll select our eyedropper tool by clicking on the eyedropper and then come up here and click the green now what we can do is just slide this up just click and drag on it and then we can control shift and we can scale this text up now if you've got snapping turned on it's going to want to snap to that guide and what we want to do is put it in the center of this frame so we're going to come over here to the align panel and I'm going to uh, click on the text and then I'm going to hold down shift and click on the frame and then I'm going to choose relative to last selected which is what's selected in mine I'm going to click center on vertical axis and it's centered snapping must have centered it when it was adjusting it for that guide so now I'm just nudging it up with my arrows and now what we have uh, next is the price actually before we do the price we need to I think we could I think we're just gonna leave this text out right here because negative space or white space as some people call it is very important to making things stand out and I think if we get this too crowded then the price and this the message that we want to send is first cut is forty nine dollars the bigger that this can be the more attention it will grab so and the more space around it the more attention it, and the more space around it the more attention it will grab as well so I think if we just leave this line of text out will be doing all right so I'm gonna come over here and just create the forty nine dollars by clicking on uh, the flyer using my text tool and I'm gonna type out forty nine and that text is actually a different color so I'm going to come over here to the 
stroke and fill, choose the pick colors from image eyedropper tool with the, the price selected and then I'm going to click up here in that on that yellow area and then I'm going to choose the select tool and I'm going to hold down control and shift and I'm going to drag price out. I'm offsetting this a little bit which is a little different than what they're doing here but we can fix that. See our text is our text is not really as as wide as the font that they're using but what I want to do is change to the select tool with this so I'm just gonna select this text and scale it up a little bit and I'm gonna hold down shift and control as I scale that up so that it'll scale evenly in all directions and then we'll have first cut takes up the full uh, area and we can nudge this down a little bit and if we wanted to we can make sure that it that it's lined up with the with the F and first cut and like I said before we kind of want some space around this price and now what we can do is just put in our I'll choose the selector tool here and then switch back over to my model and then get these two lines of text we may end up formatting those a little different but I'm gonna hit control C and then come over here and choose my text tool and I'm gonna click over here in a new area and then control V and that's gonna paste that text uh, in place now our line spacing is still set up for uh, when we used multiple lines over here so what I wanna do is I wanna select all this text inside of here so with the text tool selected I'm just gonna drag and highlight all of that text and then I'm going to come up here and I'm gonna reduce the line spacing of that text until we get it down to one and then I want to remove the white space that's inside of it and I'm going to select all of this text again just by using my shift key and my arrows to highlight everything that's in there and I want to change the size of it and if they read it then they'll be able to see all this information so it doesn't really need to be that big uh, we're gonna get their attention with the price and the large text on this so I'm gonna scale this down until we can get this information all in the box and I'm gonna move this over just a little bit and I think we're gonna have to use multiple lines for the address and the phone number so I'm going to hit return to put that phone number on its own line and then I'm gonna put an empty line between the address and I'm just gonna format this address in a format that addresses normally have. Now, here's the thing. Uh, since we're in this box, what I think might be helpful is to select all of that text by hitting Control A. And then I wanna come up here and I wanna right align this part. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna put an edge over here that'll line this up. I don't know, maybe centering it is better. Let's see what centering looks like. Okay, so it centered it, but then it moved our text all the way over here. So I'm gonna drag it back. I think I like the centered look better. And we want this to be green, and it may still be a little too big, so I'm gonna select the text tool and just take it down a little bit more. Maybe down, yeah, that looks about right. And then with the select tool I'm going to just reposition this so it's still in the center and then in the fill and stroke paint panel I will come over here and select the fill of the text and then just sample some of that green see we want this yellow to contrast with and you know I'm thinking I'm thinking that this price should be the same color as the text that we used for the expiration date and the contact us. So I'm going to select that price and then I'm going to do the same thing and sample that color out of this expiration date. And what I think that does is it kind of makes it more readable because it's a darker color and it contrasts better. And it's a different color from the rest of the text in the box. So I, I don't know. You, you might want to put 
some people would even put even its own color in there like maybe red so if you did like a red color that would really stand out it's the only red thing on the whole page so you could do whatever you want here whatever you think is going to grab attention uh, I'm just going to stick with the model I'm going to hit Control Z to get that color back and then we have one piece of text that we need to put in here and then I think we'll be done we can compare it to our model uh, and then export it and then take that file and have it printed uh, I'll go through all that though let's get this last, last piece of text in place so we're gonna take uh, this text and we're going to copy it with control C and I'm gonna go back over to Inkscape and I'm gonna click the text tool and I'm going to what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna drag out a text area so up until now what we've been doing is just clicking and then pasting and letting it do what it wants but what you can do too is you can drag out a predefined area that you want the text to fit in and that's what I'm gonna do for this one so now we've limited where this text can go and when I click control V and paste it in there it's gonna confine that text to that area uh, you can see that it remembers the last color that we selected so we're gonna have to resample the green but it's aligned center aligned like we did this text and uh, the line spacing is okay we might nudge that line spacing up a little bit but I don't know one one tens not bad uh, we can even go down a little bit. This is what we would consider. Uh, I don't know. I kind of like this 13 size better because it fills up both lines. Looks more even. So I'll click the selection tool and then I'll just nudge this down. And then we'll sample this green color. Put it on that text. And now, uh, and now we're done. Uh, and so now we're done. We just need to uh, nudge this text up a little bit. Because from far away... It, it looks like it's a little too close to that frame but now all we need to do is uh, export this to a file format we need to save it first I'm just gonna hit control s and save the whole document now what we need to do is after we've saved the original document once we've got it all created we want to export this to a file format that can be used at a printer and I'm just looking at this uh, right now and I notice that this is not this looks like it's sitting down a little bit so I just want to select all of these items just by dragging out a rectangle around them and you may have to click your selection tool you may have to click this tool right here but that's the one that you use for this and I'm just going to nudge this up to where this line is even with the top of this frame and that's going to get this line closer to the bottom of that frame so I'm just going to nudge everything up and just uh, kind of align that a little bit better I think that looks better uh, it doesn't look it doesn't look like uh, it was misplaced alright so now I need to control S control S to save the document and now we want to export it so to do that we're going to use our export tab in our tools panel now here's the thing you can export this in a bunch of different formats but if you're gonna take it to have it printed or if you're gonna print it out on a printer it needs to be a very high quality dots per inch and for print you usually want 300 DPI now to do you'll see the DPI setting here in Inkscape so we want to set this to 300 and then tab out of that area and you'll see that it changes the width and the height of our document automatically but then what we want to do is we want to put it in a format that is going to be easily used at the office place that prints it out. So what we want to do is change this from PNG, which is just an image, 
we want to change it to a PDF. PDFs, portable document format, they are very, uh, they're a common format in the printing industry. So if you use portable document format and then select your file folder here, now you can choose where you want to put this PDF. Now you're going to have to change the the file extension here. You're going to have to change it to portable document format. And then you can name this uh, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it Lawn Care uh, Special Flyer is fine because it's a flyer with the special, the coupon on it. Maybe, maybe I'll change uh, special to coupon and then you can even give a title to it so I'm gonna click Save and then Inkscape is going to create a PDF of this flyer now once you've exported your document to a PDF you'll see up here that there's this little asterisk before the name of the file in Inkscape now that means that this needs to be saved and the reason why is because although we saved it already it was before we exported we did the export so we want Inkscape to be able to remember the information that we just gave it for this export so I'm gonna hold down control and hit save again and you'll see that asterisk went away up here so now we can close down Inkscape and then I can go to the folder that I put it in which is this one right here and I can double click that and then you'll see here that when I open this, I can open it with a bunch of different programs. I'm just going to use Firefox to open it. But you'll see that we have uh, our flyer here. And if you take this into a an office store and go to the copy center, th they can print this out for you. That's how you create a, a, lands a lawn care and landscape flyer uh, using... Inkscape. I hope that helps and thanks for watching.